So most people, when they see a square root and they see that they need to compute a square root, they'll either grab a calculator or if one's not available, they'll start to guess values and just square them and see how close they get and dwindle down the estimate from there. But there's actually an algorithm for computing square roots by hand. It's actually pretty cool. And it looks a lot like long division. It's very different, but it, it has the feel of long division, which makes it sort of familiar. This process of taking square roots by hand is called the, well, the square root algorithm. I actually learned the computation portion of the square root algorithm when I was still doing the Kumon program, which is like way back when I was, I want to say like 10 years old is when I first learned about this. Of course, um, at the time, I was like super anti-calculator. I never ever wanted to have to use a calculator. I wanted to be able to do it all by hand. So I was really excited back then about this algorithm. But also, as I've learned more and more math, it's been really cool to see where this algorithm comes up in different areas of math and how you can actually prove that it works. So what makes this algorithm pretty interesting is that you can do the computation, that's great, but there are connections between it and some elementary algebra and real analysis, uh, which I think is really cool. So before I break down the algorithm in a more rigorous manner, I want to go through just a basic computation with the algorithm to give you an idea of the process before we get into the nitty gritty. And then after that, I also want to give a geometric nod to one way you can think about this algorithm. Um, and that will be helpful for when we go back and look at the algorithm rigorously. So if you don't care about any of that, um, rather, if you don't care about the sample computation, you can jump to this timestamp, which will take you to the geometric motivation. And then if you don't care about the geometric motivation, you can skip to this timestamp which will take you to where I actually write down the algorithm rigorously and start the proof, or at least a sketch of the proof, because we won't be able to prove all of the things that we need in order to prove it in this video. So we're gonna go ahead and take the square root of two up to the fourth decimal place. Now I'm choosing the fourth decimal place because a lot of people know that the square root of two is approximately 1.414, but they don't know what the fourth decimal point is. Sure, you could plug it into a calculator and find out right now like that, but I want to demonstrate that this algorithm actually works before I actually give the rigorous version of it. Alrighty, so to start, we're just going to go ahead and write out the whole setup. We've got our square root and we've got two, but for each decimal place that I want to evaluate up to, I'm going to add two grouped zeros after the decimal point of the two. Once we have that, we can go ahead and start computing. The largest natural number that's square is less than or equal to two is one. So we go ahead, place one under the two. Also, we'll place a one off to the side for some bookkeeping that we'll have to do. And then subtract one from two. Doing so, we get one and then we pull down the next two zeros. The next step will feel completely unmotivated if you've never seen this before, but we're gonna go ahead and take the one pull it down and double it. And then we're going to look for a number between zero and nine, such that when we concatenate it to two and multiply by that same number, we can evaluate that multiplication to get a number that is less than or equal to 100 and is the closest such number. With a little computation, we can find that four gets us the closest and the computation will evaluate to 96. And so with our bookkeeping done, we plug in 96 into our square root and subtract, granting us a four, and round out the step by bringing down the next pair of zeros as well. In the next step, we pull down and double the four that we inserted in the last step, and we create the new computation with blanks to be evaluated. Here, one gets us closest to 400, with the computation yielding 281. Plugging that into the long square root, we get 119 left over, and pull down the next two zeros. Speeding up here a little bit, we pull down and double the one, adjoin the best choice, which is four, to complete the computation to yield 11,296, which gives 604 left over. And then we pull down our last two zeros. Again, 
For the last step, we pull down and double the four, adjoin the best choice, which happens to be two, to yield 56,564. And stopping there without doing the subtraction, we get the square root of two up to the first four decimal points is 1.4142. And letting my phone go through the same computation, we find that we are in fact correct up to the first four decimal places. Okay, so at this point you have either seen or not seen the algorithm, but we should probably dive into some geometric motivation before we start to get rigorous for it so we can see where the rigor is going to come from. So one of the best ways to visualize how the square root algorithm works is to think about a square with a given area without knowing its side length, and start to build up that area using known side lengths, one decimal place at a time. So for an area of two, we start with a side length of one as two would be too big. A side length of one gives us a measured area of one and a unmeasured area of one. Now we're on to the tenths. Adding on a length of 0.4 generates three new regions of measured area two that are one by 0.4 and one that is a 0.4 by 0.4 square. We can see this by doing the binomial expansion on one plus 0.4 without combining one and 0.4 to yield one plus two times one times 0.4 plus 0.4 squared. After simplifying, we have a measured area of 1.96 and an unmeasured area of 0.04. And this geometric process continues by adding on smaller and smaller lengths to measure out the rest of the area. The binomial expansion bit that we gave a nod to is going to be really important as we move into the more general square root algorithm. Okay, so at this point in the video, depending on your choices previously, we have either gone through a sample computation or not, or and we have gone through the geometric motivation or not. Um, but let's go ahead and break down the algorithm. So we're going to go ahead and let C be the number that we want to find the square root of. Without loss of generality, we can assume that C has at most two digits before the decimal point. If not, then we can apply the algorithm to 10 to the negative 2k times C for some k that makes C fit our criteria. And then we can multiply the result of the algorithm by 10 to the k to get the answer for the original C. With this caveat aside, let y sub n be the start number at each step in the process, and let x sub n be the addition at each step. We're going to let this blackboard bold n sub 9 be the natural numbers from 0 to 9. So first step, find y sub 1 in n sub 9 such that y sub 1 squared is less than or equal to our c, and y sub 1 is the largest possible number that satisfies that inequality. Once we find y sub 1, we can find x sub 1 by looking for a number in n sub 9, such that this expression is less than c, and such that x sub 1 is the largest such number that satisfies that inequality. Now, for the rest of the steps, we will have y sub n equal to y sub n minus 1 plus 10 to the negative n plus 1 times x sub n minus 1. And x sub n will be the largest number in n sub 9, such that y sub n plus 10 to the negative n x sub n quantity squared is all less than our c. Having defined these two sequences, the y sub n sequence dependent on the x sub n sequence, the value of the square root is claimed to be the limit as n approaches infinity of the y sub n sequence. That proof is dependent on two things. The proof of the existence of roots, which uses some introductory analysis and gives us a supremum we would need to complete the proof, and the monotone convergence theorem for real number sequences. I'm not going to prove those today, but the monotone convergence theorem for real number sequences says that if a sequence is strictly increasing and bounded above, then the sequence converges to the supremum of the sequence. And if you don't know what a supremum is, it's just the least upper bound. And in our case, y sub n is bounded above by the square root of c, and we claim that the square root of c is the least upper bound. I'm going to leave that for 
next week's video to get into why, or some intuition at least, or a sketch of the proof for which, but we're gonna just take that as an assumption here today, which makes this proof kind of like a sketch. But anyway, here we are. So for a sketch of the proof that the square root of C is going to be this limit of the sequence, we're going to first recognize that we're taking as assumption that the square root of C is the supremum of y sub n. Next, we know that y sub n is increasing, and we can see this from writing out y sub n and y sub n plus 1, and then subtracting the 2 to yield a leftover 10 to the negative n minus 1x sub n plus 1, which is a small but still positive number, which means that the difference is greater than 0, and so we can say that y sub n plus 1 is greater than y sub n. And since we didn't need to pick an n to do this, we can say this for all n. So taking the value of the supremum and applying the monotone convergence theorem for real valued sequences gives us the limit of y sub n is equal to the square root of c. And this completes the sketch of the proof that the algorithm actually calculates the square root of c if you let it run to infinity. Now at this point you might be wondering how that weird setup and long square root thing uh, actually reflects this algorithm that we just talked about. So we're gonna go through that. All right so let's go ahead and go back to the square root of 2 computation that we did earlier and flesh some things out. At each step in the computation, we are actually working with y sub n and x sub n to find out y sub n plus 1. Since c is 2 here, we want y sub n plus 10 to the negative n x sub n squared to be less than 2 for each n where y sub n and x sub n fit the conditions of the algorithm. Expanding this binomial square out, we get this quadratic expression, less than or equal to 2. And the subtractions that we're doing at each stage in the computation are exactly the same thing as subtracting y sub n squared from both sides of this inequality. That should at least make some sense since we're just continually subtracting in the long division-like part of this computation. But what about the bookkeeping? If we look at what's left over after subtracting the y sub n squared from both sides, there is a 2 that should shout and point at the weird doubling and concatenating thing that happens in the bookkeeping process. With a small factoring adjustment to this expression here, we can see that the doubling comes from the 2 y sub n term. The concatenation comes from the 10 to the negative n x sub n term, as that term will always be one decimal point further out than what is in y sub n at each step in the construction. And the multiplication by what we concatenated is the last 10 to the negative n x sub n term. The 10 to the negative 2 n that we saw earlier in the inequality also points out why we adjoin two zeros after the decimal point for each value after the decimal point we wish to calculate. With that, we have successfully taken the computation around the square root algorithm and translated that back to, well, I guess the other way around, right? So we've successfully taken the mathy version of this algorithm and translated it to the computation that we were doing at the beginning of this video. Um, I, th I think this is really cool. Anyway, um, and I'll, that also closes out the mathematical content in this video. So I don't, I don't know. If you enjoyed it, give it a thumbs up and you can also subscribe for more mathematical content. I have a lot of stuff here. But anyway, before I close out, I just wanted to say that this year I'm going to try to do just like basic, basically focus on different topics each month. So month of January, I'll be focusing a lot on square roots in different places they come up in higher math or different things that you can think about with roots um, in general, which will be which will be very fun. And I'm talking about the numbers, not the solutions to polynomials and things like that. So um, I don't know. I'm excited about it. it. It will hopefully keep me consistent because last year I just did whatever I wanted to. And that resulted in a pretty abysmal upload schedule last year. So I'm trying to avoid that. Uh, but yeah, so anyway, 
Again, if you did enjoy this video, you can give it a thumbs up, subscribe for more mathematical content. As always, I'm Nathan, this is Chuck, and I will see you next time. Thank you.